Iranian forces announced a new campaign to force women to wear the Islamic headscarf, and the morality police are back on patrol a little less than a year since the death of 22-year-old Masa Amini. Joining us now is Iranian journalist, activist Masi Alinejad. Uh, Masi, thank you so much, as always, for coming on the show. So we were talking last December. There had been this New York Times article that, that said uh, that Iran was doing away with the morality police. At the time, you said, no, this is propaganda, and now here we are. What's your reaction to First here. of all, thank you so much for mentioning that, because I was all over the media mm -hmm. and saying that, no, this is fake news, misinformation, mm -hmm. because the Iranian regime is really good at spreading fake news around, and their propaganda was actually misleading the rest of the world that, finally, uh, the people of Iran, women of Iran being, you know, free, there is no morality police. No. Morality police has never gone anywhere. They were there using different tactics. For instance, uh, they put cameras everywhere in the subway, universities, shops, and women were un like unveiled but identified by the police. Mm. They actually closed a lot of stores who were giving service to unveiled women. Can you believe that? So now they're announcing that morality police is back because they have the fear of women to take back to the street shoulder to shoulder with men in the anniversary of Mahsa Amini, who got killed in the hand of morality police last September. And so now, once again, they're saying that you can be arrested if you don't wear the hijab. There is this mandatory law or face re-education. So this comes as no surprise to you. No, because, look, I have been living under this kind of law. Mm. And for me, that's why I was always angry about morality police. We're talking about a regime that they don't have any morale. But they have morality police to harass women in the street. Imagine, my sister, you go out here in America, you walk in the street, and a bunch of people, a bunch of officers comes to you and say that, oh, you're not properly covered. Oh, cover your hair. Oh, cover your... That's an insult. Or be arrested. You receive lashes. Not only being arrested, don't forget that. Nika Shakarami, 16-year-old, got killed just because of waving the headscarf burning the headscarf in public. And that is frustrating when I see that sometimes some well-known female politician, Western leaders, they don't even get it that we are not fighting against a small piece of class. It is about our dignity. It is about a gender apartheid regime. And now, even fighting against compulsory job became a symbol of reg regime change. That's why the Islamic Republic is scared, because women became like a nightmare for this regime. ABC News reporter Samaya Malakin has written about some of the various punishments that women face for not wearing their hijab. Among them, uh, she's talked about one woman who had to pay a fine of washing dead bodies in Tehran as a social service. Uh, in another case, a judge told an actress she needed to be referred to a psychological center due to antisocial personality disorder and her need to be seen via breaking norms. At any point in the last 10 months, let's say, would you say that things got better, at least for a short amount of time, or the optics, at Not least? Not at no. all. Look, you see that the numbers of women walking unveiled increased, but that's because women got fearless. It has nothing to do with the Islamic Republic. Why I'm telling that? Because if, according to New York Times, morality police was abolished, mm -hmm. then why women, the schoolgirls, were the target of chemical attack? Mm. Or oh, suddenly they get rid of morality police, but they, you know, poison women? Then why a lot of protesters got executed? So that actually shows you nothing got better. They were busy of oppressing women and men in other way, different tactics. So for me and millions of people, the things get better when the regime is gone. When, like, you know, we are, we want to have a country which became a la become a land of tourism, mm -hmm. not terrorism. We want to have a country where, like, you, you don't see anyone burning the flag of America. We love to have secular democracy and we deserve that. Masi, what should America or other global superpowers be doing at this point to protect Iranian women? Isolate the killers. Isolate the gender apartheid regime. You know, when I see that the U.S. government are back to the negotiation table, I've been warning for month and month that, uh, you know, Rob Mali, the Iran's uh, U.S. envoy for Iran, is not doing enough. Now he's under, you know, the investigation of the FBI. Believe me, we want 
uh, the American government to support civil society. We want the Europeans to support Iranian women, not negotiating or having a deal with our killers, because this is how you empower them to oppress women more and more. Masi Alinajad, always such an education, so much insight and, and value that you bring to our program when you come on. Thank my you. My dream is to invite you to my beautiful country because mm. you actually gave voice to many voiceless women. And thank you so much. Thank you, Masi. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.